For our information, let's choose the trapezoid list, which as you read in the preview window, is used to show grouped or related information of equal value and works well with large amounts of text, and that's certainly true in our case. Once the diagram is chosen, it will appear on your slide in a template format. Then you must choose between 14 different styles of that template, from the very plain to the very cutting edge 3D tilted in a lot of different directions to 3D with a bevel effect. You can also get 3D with outlines, bevel without outlines, and add infinitum because one of the things about these diagrams is that each element is customizable, including the size. Here I'm going to resize the trapezoid list to fit my slide fully. And then after that, all the other features are also customizable. Color, shape, the amount of text, the number of bullets, as well as the surface features, as you just saw. Once the trapezoid is fully sized and centered the way I want it, the coloring can then take place with a series of color patterns that have been pre-selected for you. These color patterns, in our case, just happens to include, thank you very much, uh, the kind of green that we're using in our green motif. Not seeing enough distinction there. Let's go back up to the PowerPoint 2007 red mauve green motif and enter in our text. As you see, as I enter in the text, the point size changes automatically or adapts automatically to the trapezoid. And that automaticity also includes the text that I enter in to the bullet list. You can add bullets, you can subtract bullets, you can do anything to these diagrams as if you had drawn them yourself. Now, these diagrams look very unique to us now and we love them, but keep in mind that once everybody has a copy of Microsoft 2007 and we've seen all of these 80 diagrams in various presentations, they're going to become old and non-distinct and no longer unique for us, at which time we will want a PowerPoint 2011 or learn to do something more customizable. And indeed, that's the next element that I wish to talk about, combining your own customizing with smart art. The ability to customize elements for your PowerPoint presentation is important because there will always be Microsoft templates out there and a lot of people using them. Therefore, in order for your PowerPoints to be unique now and in the future, it's important to know how to customize. We have a great candidate for a customized bullet in our TechSmith Camtasia Studio button. So let's select our picture, put it on our new slide that we're designing, and let's go to the Picture Tools ribbon, and then Format, and then the Crop Tool. And let's use our Crop Tool to reduce that button to nothing but green. In other words, get rid of all the background so that we have only the green element to work with. And let's also reduce it to a square so that whenever we apply our oval or circle tool that we get something approximating a good circle. Once we've eliminated the background and produced a square, and by the way, you can use the height and width tools in the upper right hand window to produce a perfect square. It is then a simple matter of going up to our format picture shapes and applying the oval to produce a button that we can then work with. So let's go up to Picture Shapes, click, pull down, and select our basic shape oval circle. And voila, we've got a pretty good looking circular button there. Right now it's kind of a flat image, so let's put a border on it to give it a little bit more relief, and maybe a little bit more relief with some bevel. And now with this bevel and the border, it looks much more like a button. Let's go up to our size window in the top right,
and since we have lock aspect ratio on we can simply change one element and bring it down to a more typical bullet size. Now that we have our prototype bullet we simply duplicate it as many times as we need. Now let's select them all and put them into a group so that we can align them. Hold down the shift key as you click on each bullet that will group them and then let's go to arrange align. Let's align them left along the vertical axis then let's go to arrange again and let's distribute them equally in a vertical fashion making sure we've got equal spaces between all three. If we're satisfied with that, we can group them all together more permanently by selecting them all, going up to Arrange, and selecting Group. Now they will always function as a single object until we ungroup. Another way to align your bullets is with the grid lines and your eyeballs. So let's ungroup these bullets. And then let's go over to the View tab and then after the View tab, go down to the Show Hide Grouping and turn on the grid lines. Now we align the bullets using our grid lines and our eyeballs. And once we've got them lined up according to the dots and the lines, we can again go back up to the Format tool after grouping our bullets again. And at the Format tool, distribute vertically one more time just to make sure, get any last little nudging done, see there it nudged, and also to align left, uh, see it nudged just a little bit, and now we know that they're absolutely perfectly aligned. One other alignment I'm going to apply is to move them over to the edge of that grid line so that they're lined up to the edge of that top bar and the F. Okay, looks great. In our next recording, we are going to add some animations to the text that goes with these bullets.